Okay, so believe me, I really didn't plan for things to be quote-unquote Cole Caulfield week where we unbox the jersey and we make an April Fool's video and we talk about him and other stuff, but the Hobie Baker finalists, the final three, they've just been announced, and with Canadians and Senators fans being so crazy about their prospects, I thought it would be a good idea to just go over it in a video once and for all and be like, okay, this is what we have. So, what we're going over is the Hobie Baker Award, pretty much the best player in the NCAA in Division I men's ice hockey, and the final three. They're dubbing it the Hattrick finalists, because, you know, a Hattrick is scored by getting three goals, so three guys left here. They had themselves a list of what was 50 players earlier on in the season where we had the fan voting. Leafs fans came in here trying to sabotage Cole Caulfield because they didn't want Habs fans to be happy. But as we noted the entire time, even though some random guy named Colin Bielek, who most Leafs fans didn't even know existed before the fan voting, was winning, the fact is this fan vote was only taken in as a suggestion to the people who actually make the decision as to who wins the Hobie Baker and who doesn't, which is why Cole Caulfield was included in the final 10 selection process as well. In the 10 finalists category, we had ourselves what was a very, very stacked list at the top. We made a video earlier in the month talking about how Shane Pinto of the Senators, Dylan Holloway of the Oilers, and Cole Caulfield of the Canadians were all just leading this category by far, because the fan voting support for all three of these guys was immaculate. But of course, that, just like the initial list of 50 plus players, is only taken in as a suggestion for the guys who make the decision. So, what we have here are the final three. Let's go over these guys and their seasons because I think it's just really good to talk about these players, you know? Just acknowledge what they have done and why they're even in this spot in the first place. First off, Cole Caulfield. I mean, do we even need to say anything else about this guy? Number one in the league in goals, number one in the league in points, number one in the league in points per game as a sophomore. Recently signed with the Canadians, he'll be going over to the Laval Rocket. Let's focus on the other guys here. So, Shane Pinto is over here as the second player who was also dubbed in the final three. Pinto making headlines because yesterday he decided to sign with the Ottawa Senators after there was a boatload of concern debating whether or not he wouldn't. Now, Shane Pinto was in a spot where as a guy taken in the second round of the 2019 NHL entry draft by the Ottawa Senators was seen by many people as a weird pickup at the time because you had other players like Bobby Brink and Arthur Kaliev all available in that same spot. They went immediately after Pinto, by the way. But Shane Pinto immediately after showed off his value in the NCAA because suiting up for the North Dakota Fighting Sioux, he was absolutely balls to the walls amazing. 32 points, 28 games played, 15 goals and 17 assists on a team that eventually ended up losing in that quintuple overtime game against Minnesota Duluth the other day. But Shane Pinto, alongside of Jake Sanderson, Tyler Clevin, and Jacob Bernard Docker, all Senators prospects in the North Dakota system, not all of them decided to sign with the Senators immediately after, but Pinto was indeed one of them who did. Shane Pinto is noted by most people for his elite face-off talent. Here's an article back on December 4th in 2020. This is taken here from the Grand Forks Herald, talking about how in a UND versus Denver game, Shane Pinto went 18 to nothing on the face-offs. 18. Here's the write-up over here. I thought that was no way accurate. 18 without losing a single one, without a weird hop of the puck, without a tie-up that his wingers didn't get to. Not a chance. In 16 years of covering UND hockey, I've never heard of such a thing. Not even close. So at about 2 a.m., I, the writer of this article over here, I'll leave a link in the description, by the way, brewed a cup of coffee, pulled up the game on NCHC TV, grabbed a pen, and started watching. Win, 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 win. It was legit. 5-0 in the first period, 4-0 in the second, 8-0 in the third, and 1-0 in overtime. And if you take a look at how exactly this guy was out here chasing the records, Shane Pinto's freshman face-off success last year was a mark of 61.2% in the dot. And that's crazy. 
There are other NHLers compared here. Tyson Jost had a 60.1% winning percentage as a freshman. Travis Sajak, 57.2. Jonathan Taves, 55.7. Nelson with a 53.7. So, Pinto's a lot better than these guys. The article talks about how early on in the season, Pinto was at a 37-9 faceoff winning number as well, which is ultimately 80.4%. So, yeah, this guy is really good at faceoffs. If you're wondering, Shane Pinto finished off the 2021 NCAA season with a total faceoff percentage of 61.9, which is actually 44th in the NCAA on collegehockeynews.com, but there are a whole bunch of guys here that I don't doubt have one or two faceoffs going on for them, so I'm not really too sure how exactly it stacks up if you take a look at more than 100 faceoffs taken, for example, but it is what it is. 61.9% is still really, really good as a primetime center. For example, in the NHL, just taking a look at faceoffs in the top league in the world. If you sort it on the NHL website by centers and you go by over 10 games played, Andreas Athanasiu shows up, which is weird. I didn't realize that he was a center on LA, but it is what it is, I guess. But right after that, Franz Nielsen, 67.9%. Trevor Lewis, 66.6%, tied with Alex Galchenyuk. Then you have Glenn Denning, who is one of the better faceoff men in the league, 63.5%. Bergeron is at a 622 And then the rest of the guys afterwards, hey, they're kind of less than 61.9%. And the fact that... Shane Pinto is one of these elite face-off men in the NCAA coming into the NHL. It's a pretty good thing for the Senators, since right now they rank 24th in the NHL in overall face-off percentage, 48.4%, so Pinto can definitely help them out. But of course, Pinto also has some other redeeming qualities too, not just the face-offs. It's his pretty alright playmaking, it's his two-way ability and all that. And now I just realized we spent seven minutes talking about one Ottawa Senators guy. Let's go over onto the last name here for the Hobie Baker finalists. Obviously, we have Cole Caulfield, we have Shane Pinto. Those are two top quality NHL prospects. But the last name on the list is not an NHL prospect, or at the time, he is not affiliated with an NHL team. It's Dryden McKay after Minnesota State University Mankato. He's an undrafted goaltender who has been absolutely astounding throughout the three years he has spent in the NCAA. Just taking a look at the pure wins to losses, this season with Mankato, he went 21-3. Now, the team was really good, yes, but the fact is, Posting up a 9-3-1 save percentage and a 1-3-9 goals against average in 25 games certainly makes things a lot easier for the team that is in front of you. He played 25 games this season, and 10 of those games were shutouts. And, you know, just kind of taking a look at the numbers here, if you're playing 25 hockey games and almost half of them, you give up zero goals, I think you're doing a pretty good job. So, yeah, Dryden McKay, take a look at the awards this guy was able to get as well. Two straight years in a row being on the first all-star team for the WCHA, two straight years in a row of being the goaltending champion. He was given the Player of the Year award in the WCHA this year, and he was a finalist for the Hopi Baker last year as well. So for Dryden McKay, we'll see if there's any NHL team that wants to go out there and take a swing on this guy because he will probably be a free agent if he doesn't decide to go back to Mankato for another year. The only problem, though, is that the 23-year-old goaltender is 5'11" which is gonna be probably the biggest factor as to whether or not he gets signed or not by an NHL team because, you know, 5-7 goal scores come and go. You have the small guys who can produce points, like the Cole Caulfields or the Brinkets and the Johnny Gaudreaux. You have the small guys sometimes who are on the back end, like the Quinn Hughes and all of them. But for goalies, we still live in an era where goaltending depth seems to rely a lot on size, and smaller guys aren't really given an opportunity because, hey, they're short. The puck's more prone to going over their shoulders than if they were 6-5, like Jacob Markstrom, for example. But of course, we'll see. Time will tell as to whether or not Dryden McKay has an NHL future, but being as good of a goaltender he was in the NCAA certainly does have its benefits, which is why he is one of the three finalists for the Hobie Baker as well. So, let me know in the comments. Cole Caulfield, Shane Pinto, Dryden McKay, who do you think is going to win the Hobie Baker this year? I'm leaning Caulfield, but of course, that's because I'm me. You can definitely have some good arguments for the other guys as well. Although, in my opinion, 
If I had to rank them based off of who I think is more likely, I'd go Caulfield, McKay, Pinto. No disrespect to Pinto. The guy's great. It's just, McKay, dude, 10 shutouts in 25 games. How can you argue against that? So, talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry that I troll this is 99. And, bye. <laughs>